aging is 80 to 90 percent the cause of heart disease, Alzheimer's. If we didn't get old and our bodies stayed youthful, we would not get those diseases. And actually what we're showing in my lab is if you turn the clock back in tissues, those diseases go away. There are a couple of things. One is we want to slow aging down so we don't get those diseases. And when they do occur, don't just stick a Band-Aid on, reverse the age of the body, and then the diseases will go away. And there are two types of information in the body. There is the genetic information, which is digital, A, T, C, G, the chemical letters of DNA. But there's this other part of the information in the body that's just as important. It's essential, in fact. And that's the systems that control which genes are switched on and off, in what cell, at what time, in response to what we eat, etc. And it turns out that 80% of our future longevity and health is controlled by this second part, the epigenetic information, the control systems. There are studies that show that the slower you take to develop, it also is predictive of having a longer, healthier life. If you look at who lives the longest, it's the really small people. But no matter what size you are, you can have a bigger impact on your life than anything your genes give you. 80% is epigenetic, not genetic. Let's start with what I think was a big mistake, was the idea that people should never be hungry. We live in a world now where there's at least three meals a day, and then we've got companies selling bars and snacks in between. It was based, I believe, on the 20th century view that you don't want to stress out the pancreas and you try to keep insulin levels pretty steady. What we actually found, my colleagues and I, across this field of longevity, is that when you look at, first of all, animals, whether it's a dog or a mouse or a monkey, the ones that live the longest, by far, 30% longer, and stay healthy are the ones that don't eat all the time. Um, it actually was first discovered back in the early 20th century, but people ignored it. And then it was rediscovered in the 1930s. Clive McKay did caloric restriction. He put cellulose in the food of rats so they couldn't get as many calories even though they ate. And those rats lived 30% longer. But then it, it went away. And then it came back in the 2000s in a big way when a couple of things happened. One is that my lab and others showed that there are longevity genes in the body that come on and protect us from aging and disease. The group of genes that I work on are called sirtuins, there's seven of them. And we showed in 2005 in a science paper that if you have low levels of insulin and another molecule called insulin-like growth factor, those low levels turn on the longevity genes. One of them that's really important is called SIRT1. And, but by having high levels of insulin all day, being fed means your longevity genes are not switched on. So you're falling apart, your epigenome, your information that keeps your cells functioning over time just degrades quicker. Your, your clock is ticking faster by always being fed. The other thing that I think might be happening by always having food around is that it's not allowing the cell to have periods of rest and reestablish the epigenome. And so it also is accelerating in that direction. There's plenty of other reasons as well that are not as profound, such as having low levels of glucose in your body will trigger your major muscles in your brain to become more sensitive to insulin and suck the glucose out of your bloodstream, which is very good. You don't want to have glucose flowing around too much. And that will ward off type 2 diabetes. There's a really interesting experiment that was published maybe a couple of years ago by Rafael de Cabo down at the NIH. What he did was he took over 10,000 mice and gave them different combinations of fat, carbohydrate, protein, and he was trying to figure out what was the best combination. And then he also cleverly had two groups, one that was fed all the time, as much as they wanted, and the other group was only given food for an hour a day. And it turns out they ate roughly the same amount of calories, because of course in an hour, they're stuffing their faces. It turns out it didn't matter what diet he gave them, it was only the group that ate within that window that lived longer and dramatically longer. So my conclusion is, and mice are very similar to us metabolically. I think that tells us that it's not as important what you eat, it's when you eat during the day. Definitely try to skip a meal a day. That's the best thing. I skip breakfast. I'm just keeping myself filled with liquids and so I don't feel hungry. Beware that the first two to three weeks when you try that, you will feel hungry. And you also have a habit of wanting to chew on something. There's a lot of physical parts to it. But try to make it through the first three weeks and do without breakfast or do without dinner. You'll get through it. And I did that for most of my life, actually, mainly because I wasn't hungry in the morning. Some people are very hungry in the morning and they may want to consider skipping dinner instead. But I will go throughout the whole day 
I don't get the crashes of the high glucose and the low glucose. Anyone who goes, oh man, it's three o'clock, I'm gonna need to sleep. If you do what I do, you will not experience that anymore. Because what my body does, it regulates blood sugar levels naturally. My liver is putting out glucose when it needs to, and it's very steady and gives me pure focus throughout the day. And I don't even have to think about lunch, I'm just powering through. At dinner, I, mean, I love food as much as anybody. So I will eat a regular, pretty healthy meal. I'll eat, I'll try to eat mostly vegetables. I can eat some fish, some shrimp. I rarely will eat a steak. In fact, my microbiome is so adapted to my diet. Now, if I eat a steak, it will not get digested very well. I'll feel terrible. I rarely eat dessert. I gave up dessert and sugar when I turned 40. And um, occasionally I'll steal a bit of dessert because it doesn't hurt if you steal it, right? But other than that, I avoid sugar, which includes simple carbohydrates, bread, I try to avoid. I've actually noticed I don't get plaque anymore. And I think it's because of my diet. I don't have those sugars in my mouth that the bacteria feed on and then form the biofilm on the teeth. Much better breath, by the way. What we now know is that after two, and actually even better if you go for three days without eating, it kicks in even greater longevity benefits. There's a system called the autophagy system, which digests old and misfolded proteins in the body. And there's a natural cleansing that happens when you're hungry. Macro autophagy, its name is. A deep cleanse called the chaperone mediated autophagy, which kicks in day two, day three, which really gets rid of the deep proteins. If you trigger this process in an old mouse, it lives 35% longer. These longevity pathways, we call them, these longevity genes talk to each other. You pull one lever and the other one moves. And the way to think of it is that there are systems set up to detect what you're eating. So the sirtuins will mainly respond to sugar and insulin. And then there's this other system called mTOR, which is sensing how much protein or amino acids are coming into your body. And they talk to each other. We can pull one and affect the other and vice versa. But together, when you're fasting, you'll get the sirtuin activation, which is good for you. And you'll also, through lack of amino acids, particularly three of them, leucine, isoleucine, valine, the body will downregulate mTOR. And it's that up sirtuin, down mTOR that is hugely beneficial and turns on all of the body's defenses, chewing up the old proteins, improving insulin sensitivity, giving us more energy, repairing cells, all of that. And so these two pathways, I think, are the most important for longevity. People who exercise and eat less have a slower ticking clock. It's a fact. The point about doing this is that you try to do your best. If you go from regular living to don't eat the whole day, you're going to fail and your brain will fight it. Your limbic system is going to go, hey, do it, do it, do it. And you're going to have to fight it. But once you get through it, you'll be better. But you do it in stages. Do breakfast first, then do small lunch, and then eventually cut lunch out. It's a fact that if you try to do a strict diet right out of the gates, you'll almost always fail. 